Hey, what's going on, everyone? From Mad Men Marketing, I'm Ryan Blair, and you're watching Mad Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by J.D. Blair, founder and president of Mad Men Marketing. J.D., welcome to the show. Yeah, so go ahead and eat number one right now. Like, eat it? Eat that All right, so beyond your success with Mad Men Marketing, you have a number of interests, perhaps chief among which is music, specifically playing the guitar, writing your own music, and singing your own songs. So how did you get started in music? So got started in music. Um, I mean, I've always loved music, but uh, our older brother Kenny, uh, you know, played with uh, with Ryan Emling, and they got me uh, interested in music. And then um, Weed, well, at SIU, got me interested uh, more in the Dave Matthews Band, um, which really got me into music. And then, um, yeah, now it's like uh, therapy. As someone that can recount the the nights on the the front porch on Cole Street with you. Uh, <laughs> in your early days of plucking the strings. Uh, it's it's something unique to watch JD's patented blend of never ever f give up <laughs> and become good at it until I'm the best at it kind of thing, so. Um, I don't know about the best, but I have a lot of fun. <laughs> Nowhere near the best, <laughs> in fact. So that first one was, uh, there's there nothing going on, that was fun. Oh, yeah, you, you know what, I, I forgot to take mine, actually. I, it's, it's my largest piece of chicken, so. Mm. But that one with the green sauce looks pretty bad. Right there. Should probably mention, as a deviation to the original show, I don't have an iron gut like Sean Evans has. That uh, I would go straight to the second one. That one might be my favorite, like flavored sauce ever. It's not hot. The garlic and pepperoni. It is phenomenal. I would put some of those on your wings. Well, you didn't eat it yet, did you? Yeah, I did. But you had the wing before the question? Yes. All right. So there's 10 questions. So now I got to ask the question, Let's huh? Get to the All second right. question, yeah. Get to the second question. We're in a hurry. <laughs> so it's like uh, Mad Ones Express. <laughs> All right. So before you're the driving force behind Mad Men Marketing, you were a highly successful executive at WJXT here locally. Can you compare the, the work environment and the, and the workflow between the two? So working at Channel 4, so what... I wouldn't, you know, the culture is different just because, you know, Channel 4 um, is a corporate organization where we're not. And, you know, when you look at like dress code there versus here, you know, like I like to suit up, but it, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I don't require anybody to suit up and I want to have to suit up every day. And um, yeah, we certainly wouldn't be doing stuff like this over there. Um, but I mean, great people, great organization, um, you know, they do some great things. But what I was involved in wasn't on the content side, it was on the sales side, you know, one of the local sales managers there. And um, so here it's nice because I get to really um, dabble across the board with, with all the creatives. You know, we only have a few salespeople here and it's, you know, 75, 80% creatives where there all I dealt with was 100% salespeople. You are perhaps less well known, albeit in smaller circles for your versatility as a gourmand. Uh, what the <laughs> f is a gourmand? <laughs> Like a gourmet chef. Oh. So can you kind of describe briefly how you developed your signature? Garlic, salt, and pepper. <laughs> well, Everything A little garlic, less salt, briefly pepper. how you developed your signature uh, taste, style. Uh, uh, I like food. I like garlic. I like salt. And I enjoy pepper. Garlic, salt, and pepper. <laughs> now, growing up with a, you know, a French grandma and then... Um, you know, like on grandpa's side of the family being Southern influenced, uh, you know, uh, it grew up with a lot of interesting blends. So we would have like a, you know, gourmet French spin on like mashed potatoes or something, which is basically just, you know, hedonistic amounts of butter and salt. And that was pretty much everything that, you know, that grew up, uh, you know, meme, which is what we, you know, call our French grandma. Um, every single thing was loaded with butter and garlic and salt and pepper. Okay, that's definitely the answer I was looking for. At first, I was like, man, you're going to make me milk a dry cow. Okay, good answer. Moving on to so is this fourth four? wing. This, this, is, uh, this is Hellfire? The Murfreesboro Devil thing. Which I've tried before. It's pretty good. Mmm, that was good. Mm. It really soaked into these veggie wings. Salty. <laughs> it's like soaked through in, into the middle. Um, yeah, these are pretty good. I wish I knew the brand because as far as vegan wings go, these are like the best I've ever had. Oh, okay. That's great. 
Yeah. And these all came from, um, we picked these up from Island Wing Company. Is that what it's, you know what it's called? Yeah. Over on Southside. They, they didn't sponsor Go this there. at all, but yeah, they're tasty. Okay. So we both just did five? We did four. So now you're ready for question four. You've had the opportunity to travel the world by land, sea, and air. Anything from a cross-country trip in an RV to flying overseas in Dublin to, you know, a Mediterranean cruise and hiking up mountains in Montenegro. Does any travel de travel agent? Does any is? travel destination <laughs> stand head and shoulders above the rest? And if so, why? Oh my God. Well, I mean, so many locations. Have, I mean, it's it's different. I mean, you know, Montenegro is one of my favorite places that I've ever been. Uh, it's beautiful, but primarily because when you, we like took a tour bus up to the top of like this mountain, and um, they they're known for like smoking meat and smoking cheese. And I went there, and of course, we started to eat that, and I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to sit there and eat that all the time. Um, Devil's Tower, Wyoming. I've told you that before. I love Devil's Tower. Um, I stumbled onto it on that RV trip back in 2013. We pulled up at nighttime to stay at this um, like camping ground. Um, Koa or KOA, I'm not exactly sure what it's called. And the next morning we got up to go outside and like make breakfast and it was like, there's this, and it's like a volcano plug. It's like 1,200 feet in the air. And um, wipe my hands, I don't wanna get, even though I'm using a fork. Um, just sitting there and I don't know, it was really majestic and I really, I really love it and enjoyed it a lot. So France is, you know, I love going to Paris. Um, best place to go eat is, is London. Um, you have such a wide variety of food um, at least for me, um, that you can get, you know. Um, so more than just fish and chips. Oh yeah, I mean their fish and chips are great. Um, of course, I, I have an affection for uh, English breakfast tea now since my first time uh, eight or nine years ago going there. Um, but overall, you just have such a great variety. Good. Now we're on five. Yeah, now we're on Los Calientes. So. Good taste. He's. I'm getting some heat like behind the teeth right now, man. I don't know about you, but it's building on me. It's like mostly on my tongue because the way I like soaking in these wings. It's good. It's hot. Mmm. Mmm. First we feast presents. Like this, I would love this on my eggs. I could see that. There's a there's a subtle sweetness in it. Have you Still guys tried any of these? No. No. Are you gonna try? <laughs> I can't so, see the people off camera, but they're better suited for the camera than us for many reasons. Well, look at their chins. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that one a lot. What's the next question? What's question five? Okay. We have a recurring segment. Well, we don't. Hot Ones has a recurring segment uh, called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, uh, pull out some obscure photos that just need a little bit more context. Is this going to be like the, whatever you're about to ask me, is it going to be on screen when this gets out of Yeah, when it, it, it'll be on screen. So okay. I'll ask you about it now, All right. even though you can't Fire see away. it now. Um, okay. There's a, an image from the beer house in Milwaukee from uh, July of 2015. Um, Was it sausage? Where's this little slice of Bavaria and what made it so special? Uh, I don't remember where in uh, Milwaukee it was, but I was in town for a Dave Matthews concert. Surprise, surprise. And um, there, we were like walking around kind of the outskirts of downtown Milwaukee. And there was a sign that said, um, uh, free sausage as long as you drink beer. So I was like... It. And so Kenny and I went in there and um, had like five or six different types of sausage and like two gigantic, you know, like double fisted beers. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but I definitely advise going there. Okay, I think I have one more for you here. Five or are we on six? All right, number six. Cheers to the sun. Salty. Mm, no pepper, sweet. Salty, sweet. <laughs> Pretty warm. Yeah, that's gonna, this is gonna suck. If it's all uphill from here. It's good. I like it. Well, this is this uh, ghost pepper sauce. Slow build. Okay. Yeah. Associated question. Okay, so as social media runs rampant these days, what do you think has made it evolve from this 
benign subsection of advertising and marketing to this megalithic um, monster that can not only reassign where ad dollars are going within companies, but create social change in a very quick manner. Well, I just, I mean, it's connected to everybody's phone. And so it's in social media, it's in everybody's pockets. And there's so many different ways to consume social media now. Um, you know, Clubhouse, you know, I'm all in Clubhouse. What do you get? It's too hot for you over there? You starting to sweat? It's building. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think the, the, you know, I mean, you got to be careful. There's a lot of misinformation out there on social media, but the, just the fact that it's connected to virtually everybody you know, in the world, especially when you talk here in, in, uh, in America. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy to watch how it continues. Every time you think like we're here, it goes further. Do you think sometimes it's a desperate attempt for advertisers to, to reach all these cord cutters and Gen Z as they progressively get older and millennials as they become the- You, the you call it a place? desperate attempt? Yeah. I wouldn't call it a desperate attempt. I mean, they advertise on there because that's where the eyeballs are. It's kind of getting hot for you. That's kind of the essence of, uh, of advertising as a whole. I may, I may have been a little heavy-handed. On what? <laughs> My pores. Ooh, that's way better than the water. I'm gonna keep that there. This one's a lot, well, no, here it comes. The honey, the honey badger's less hot. It's, it's honey in the beginning, right? And then it's like, boom, here's, here's pepper. I don't know if you can see this. Um, she looks real badass. I, mean, I feel like she's riding around my mouth cutting me with that sword right now. Okay. Accidentally healthy, intentionally delicious. <laughs> Pretty hot. So, as someone with a slick sense of style that can be seen in anything from a bespoke suit. Did you say slick sense of style? I did say that. So, anyone that can be, sorry. You can be seen know. anything from a bespoke suit to t shirt and jeans. What tips can you give to people that may want to emulate, <laughs> emulate your style? Holy uh, Talk to your friends that actually have good style. <laughs> And if you have any friends that are females, they will give you better advice or get stitch fix. Can you, uh, can you <laughs> isolate someone that's given you good fashion advice in the past or would you rather keep that off camera? Stitch fix persons. Stitch fix persons, okay. <laughs> seven. Oh, now we're getting into the bomb, huh? So do I eat this and then Wait, you're gonna ask hold me Hold up, I didn't have seven, did I? Eat your seven. One second. Seven, eight, nine, ten, <laughs> You already had seven? Yeah. Did I ask question seven? I think so. Damn it. You're waiting on me. God, there's too much on here. <laughs> These <laughs> soaking in. I feel like it's going faster than a regular episode. It's out of the roof of my mouth. The faster we go, the less burn we have to deal with. Well, tell me about that. Well, I, according to Gordon Ramsay, Gordon, yeah, I got, I got, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I prepared just in case. I got the pineapple, the powder donuts, some lemons. Well, probably like I'm, I'm maintaining okay. Like it got pretty warm there on seven, uh, eight's kind of freaking me out. The problem is, is these vegetarian wings have like soaked it all the way through. So it's like every bite, it's not like it's on the outside and I'm mixing it with like meat that doesn't have sauce. It's like the whole thing is sauce like all the way through yeah so we're now we're going to eight the the bomb this is where the base note drops yeah I up. What the and this is what how much is this one 166 oh it's like 132 and then it goes 600,002 million ask me a question come on so you're a consummate sportsman and you grew up with a lot of athletic potential. As someone who watches a lot of sporting events, what is the team that you follow most closely now? Jeez, ah, uh, man. That's, it's gotta be a toss up between the St. Louis Cardinals, um, the Cubs, uh, and uh, <laughs> sorry all my friends out there, Jules, Bryce, other Cubs lovers. Uh, the Jaguars, of course, living here in the, the 49ers. That's hot. Yeah. Talking is not helping. Yeah. I heard someone say that it goes away fast, like it's not going away. I did I did this sauce. Oh. 
about oh god, eighteen years ago in a dorm. The bomb in a dorm. And I, I went like this. I put the sauce bottle to my finger like that, and I licked it. And I was ooh. So now we're going on question nine. Mm-hmm. Oh f me. I'm like, this is this is making me. I don't know. No, oh, you already did it. <laughs> that one's fucking hot. Holy sh! All right, the scorpion. Sweat. Okay. Instantly started sweating. You've always been a big proponent for people to uh, take a second look at downtown Jacksonville. What do you think you see in downtown Jacksonville that people that have lived here their entire lives probably don't see? I don't know. That's so f***ing hot. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You're a huge advocate for the downtown renaissance in Jacksonville, Florida. What do you, what do you see in Jack uh, downtown Jacksonville, Florida that people that have lived here their entire lives perhaps do not see? Well, by the way, this just like curdled in my mouth. My mouth is so f up. I'm glad we're finally tearing down the Berkman, too. Um, I don't know, you go to places like San Antonio. Talking makes it so much worse. Downtown Jax is awesome. Come downtown. Next question. I haven't even <laughs> taken nine yet. <laughs> this sucks. All right, so this nine, nine's so bad? Much. Nine's that bad? No one ever reacts bad to nine. <laughs> you, dude. Woo. Oh, God, that doesn't even taste good. What's that one taint of the scorpion? Mm hmm. To my brother, what? You say taint of the scorpion? Mm hmm. Yeah, I've been dealing with it over here for six minutes and talking. I don't have air. Need to ask me another question? Ha. Ha. Yeah, give me a second here. Oh, God. All right, that was. We're nearly there. Are we? we are on uh so this one's called the last dab it's customary you don't have to if you don't want to to add a little bit more on the last one nope <laughs> uh you don't have to but golly we wish you would nope you're gonna do it you're gonna last dab it mm -hmm. well you're crazy because mm. i never ever want to have to do this again you're doing this with every other employee in the agency oh i'm the always host aren't you <laughs> <sighs> All right, Jenny Blair, here we are at the end of the line, almost at the apex of Spice Mountain. I would be remiss if I neglected to mention your prodigious bourbon collection. Can you touch on how many bottles you have oh, and what you're most proud All of? them. <laughs> a lot of bourbon hunting. Ooh, this is hot. Um, Give a shout out, perhaps, to a distiller that doesn't... Uh, doesn't suck? Mm -hmm. They don't suck. All bourbon is great. That's so f***ing hot. <clears throat> You're gonna cost me a last dab. You're crazy. I am. Um, oh, 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 it came out faster than I thought. Um, I love them all, man. My favorite is Heaven Hill 27. <sighs> oh, it's so hot. This sucks. <sighs> so hot. So hot. Heaven Hill 27 is my favorite. <laughs> but uh, you can't go wrong with any from Buffalo Trace. Anything from, you know, really anything from Kentucky. Tennis has some awesome stuff in Nashville. This is so hot. This is some for real sh Woo! <clears throat> What's your favorite bourbon? I think I'm dying. My favorite bourbon is not a bourbon at all. It's a rye whiskey. Uh, and right now it's the, uh, the Whistle Pig. Boss Hog, Magellan Atlantic, uh, oh, aged good. 17 years, antique, among other things. Spanish oak, too, I think. Mm. Like Spanish teak. I don't it know, could be a Spanish hot. pig Oof. for all I care right now at this point. Anyway. All right, look at that. Hey, you've done it. You've gone through the gauntlet. It now, sucks. As a, there's nothing left to do but roll out for the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, that camera, perhaps that camera. Let the world know what you're doing. I'm eating a donut because this is so hot. Oh, that, that's what I'm supposed to look up. I'm eating a donut because this one, this bullshit hollow one. Am I drooling? I feel like I'm drooling. Whew. Well, thanks for having me on, Ryan. That sucks. Holy f 